Hello, welcome to You So You. My name is Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spin, I dabble on weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we are looking at ply on the fly using a Turkish spindle. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned at the opening to this video today, we're looking at spinning up some ply on the fly yarn. Now, this is one of the things I'm doing for Tour de Fleece this year. I have these Rolax, uh, which is a particular fibre prep to help. It gives you a nice manageable little bit of, of processed stuff. And um, I got these Rolags from Magpie and Goblin. I had 75 grams in total. They are a Corridale Silk BFL Firestar mix. And um, so I've chosen to use Ply on the Fly, uh, partly so that when I finish spinning them, the yarn's already done. But it's also a chain ply that you're doing when you ply on the fly. So that helps you manage the colors and when the colors change. So it's enabled me to make sure that my orange is nice and crisp. I've allowed the pinks and purples to, to blend a little bit more, um, but I am sort of tweaking where they change a little bit, but they're quite close in, in value. And then the orange is a nice big pop. So I wanted to get a fairly crisp color change from the pinks and purples into the orange. I mean, it's not flawless. There are times where the orange is, is creeping through and that's the nature of spinning yarn. But I did want to get that a little bit more crisp than it otherwise would be. And chain ply really lends itself to that. So I'm using a Turkish spindle to do that and I'd only previously plied on the fly with a more standard drop spindle, something a bit more like this one. Um, but I wanted to use the Turkish spindle this time and it gives you these rather nice little turtles. Now I've wound up half my row legs, so seven out of the 14 row legs into this turtle and I'm not going to manage to get all seven of the remaining row legs on in the same turtle. So I'm going to start over with the other seven. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, it is the first project I've done playing the fly with a Turkish spindle. So it's, it's not a flawless technique that I've got. Um, but you'll get the general idea of what, what you're trying to achieve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this turtle off my Turkish spindle. So I'm going to remove the spike from the middle. And then I'm going to push the smaller wing or leg, whatever you want to call it, um, through my turtle and take that out and then I'm going to remove the other leg. So that is now my yarn spun and plied ready for use. I will be skeining this up into to a, a twisted hank so that I can measure the yardage once I've done my other turtle. Um, but they're quite cute these little turtles when they come off to the, the Turkish spindles. Uh, you can sort of see how the colour is changing. So I do like using the turtle, Turkish spindle for that, that purpose. Turtles are cute. Okay, so that's, I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to start working with my next row legs. Now, some people use a starter yarn on a Turkish spindle and there is a definite benefit to that if you choose to for ply on the fly because I'm going to lose a little bit of the fiber at the beginning of the spin. But it's not a huge amount, so I'm not that bothered by it, to be honest. Now, the first thing you need to do when you're loading up a Turkish spindle with any yarn is to, to get that little leader sorted out. So you can, as I say, use a leader yarn, or you can use the fiber that you've got. You can roll it through your hands to twist up the initial bit. You can roll it against your thigh. I generally take this spindle, which I normally use for plying, it's a little bit of a heavier weight spindle but I like to use this to start my leaders off for my Turkish spindle. That's my personal preference, you do you. Uh, so I'm just going to pre-draft a little bit of my fibre from my row leg and loop it around the hook that's at the top of my spindle and I'm going to twist, give it the twist. Now when we're working singles we are twisting clockwise, when we're plying we're twisting anti-clockwise. So I'm just going to get enough of a single going 
that I can get my Turkish spindle loaded up. And as I say, a lot of this spindle is, a lot of this single is going to be waste. But in the grand scheme of things, you're not even looking at a gram, I wouldn't have thought, um, of wastage for the final spin. Okay, so I think that's probably more than enough single for now. So I'm going to butterfly that down by walking my thumb and finger and I'm going to pinch where it's attached to the hook and just take that off. Put my applying spindle to one side because I don't now need that at all for the rest of this project. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the legs of my Turkish spindle and I'm going to insert the thinner one into the big hole in the larger one so I get a cross shape and the hole through the middle that the spike goes through is lined up. Then I'm going to use a crochet hook to help me. I'm going to pop that through the hole in the middle of my spindle and just grab that single that I've spun up on my other spindle and put it through the hole. So that's through, I'm just going to hold it with my thumb on the other side so it doesn't go anywhere, put down my crochet hook. Again, I don't need that now. Then we take the spike for the Turkish spindle, go making sure our hole is lined up and just pop it in till it's nice and firm and we're ready to go. So I'm going to bring the single up the, the shaft of the spindle and I'm going to put a half hitch at the top just to secure it in place. Mine has this little uh, indentation underneath the tip of the, the shaft that helps to hold it in place. Now I'm ready to spin singles as normal with the Turkish spindle. I've got plenty here. I'm just going to spin a bit more before I start plying so I've got enough length to play with. So I'm going to draft as normal and flick my spindle. Probably want a good few feet. So once you're happy with the length of single that you've got coming off your spindle, so probably a few feet, then you're going to be but need to butterfly down the single that you've made so that you can get ready for plying. So I'm just going to walk my thumb and little finger down until I'm almost at the top of the shaft. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room for this and I'm going to leave my single attached at the top of the shaft. So I'm going to create a slip knot. So I'm just going to loop it round and pull the yarn that is coming out of my butterfly, the single that's coming out of my butterfly, through. Um, so that I've got a loop. It's easier said than done when you're filming. <laughs> Okay, so there we go, I've got my loop. The loop is all important with ply on the fly. So I'm gonna release some of the single that I've spun and pull it through the loop. I'm trying to keep my slip knot fairly close to the top of my spindle. If you had used a starter yarn, your slip knot would be at the top of your starter yarn. So I'm just going to do a small loop to begin with so you can get the idea. I'm going to rest the loop and the yarn coming off the butterfly in my fibre hand and I'm going to spin the spindle anti-clockwise so that we ply up to that loop. That's my first bit of ply. It gives you a three ply. So I'm going to continue in the same way, just swapping hands around and swapping the spindle around. So you pull the, fight, the single through, pull the single through, leaving enough to, to attach to the top of the spindle when you're done. And ply it anti-clockwise. Then once you've plied your section, you can take the single off the, the tip of the shaft and all the space before um, you start applying, that's going to be your wasted distance. I mean, it's not very much. Um, I'm going to load the plied yarn onto my turtle as normal. So I go under one and over two, under one and over two. When I'm getting to the loop at the end, 
I'm going to save the loop so we don't lose it, but I'm going to do that by popping it over one of the wings and then load up my shaft with the single that's coming, that's coming off the fibre hand. I'm going to continue in the same way. So I'll come back when I've done a bit more so you can see how it looks like looks when you've got a bit more fibre on the, the wings and how we load up the shaft with a longer length of singles. So it'll be a little bit of time for me, but not too long for you. Okay, so I've got a little bit more done on the fly on the fly spin. Now, as you can see, I've got plied yarn at the bottom, right around the wings, the little the legs, whatever you want to call them, and I've got single in uh, this little cop here. So my next step is to take the singles off so I can ply that section. So you can do this resting your spindle on the arm of the chair, you can do it resting it against your belly, whatever works for you. Um, I'm just spinning it in my hand and I'm using my fibre hand to butterfly that single. Make sure you are holding your butterflying fingers quite firmly um, because otherwise with the tension you're keeping on the single here it's going to want to pull them in and it's going to get quite uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, keep them nice and firm and just butterfly all the way down through those singles. So you can rest it on a table or on a, a leg or on a arm of a chair or against your body if that works for you. Um, but spinning it in my hand just works fine for me. And um, if I'm sitting in an armchair, I'll sometimes rest it on my leg or on the arm of the chair. To, yeah, nearly there. You can sometimes get a better speed up when you're resting it on something. Okay, so there we are. I've got my single butterfly on my fibre hand. I'm going to take my first finger and pop it in the loop that's on that leg there so that I don't lose that loop. Then I'm going to take enough of the plied yarn that I can half hitch it to the top of my spindle. Okay, next step is to put the loop onto the spindle hand instead of the fibre hand. So I'll loosen up a little bit of the single and I'm going to put it through the loop and put it up. Then you're going to pull through a good chunk, releasing it from your fibre hand to be happy with the length. And then spin your spindle anti-clockwise. just like we did when we started off. Except this time you've got the plied yarn around the, the legs of the Turkish spindle. Once you finish plying that section, you're just going to wrap it around the, the legs, attach it to the top and carry on until you've plied all of this section of single. So I'm going to carry on doing that and I'll come back to you when I'm ready with some more singles to put on my spindle. Okay, so I've got my plied yarn all on the, the legs of my Turkish spindle there and I'm ready to put this single on that I've just spun up. Um, so I'm just going to take the half hitch off the top and what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to get the camera closer to the camera actually so you can see this, I'm actually spinning the spindle so that the yarn wraps around just above where that turtle is starting to form so that I create a cop like I would on a top whirl, bottom whirl, standard spindle. And I'm going to keep going until I've got enough single left to be able to come up to the top of the shaft of the spindle. As you can see that bright orange starting to grow. It's going to make a little cone shape as it goes up and I've gone a little bit farther. Okay, so I'm going to go underneath one of the legs just so it happens to be the one I've got my loop on 
um, that's going to stop my spindle dropping so gonna, that's going to secure the single as I spin it. So put the half hitch on the top and then I can carry on until I've got enough single spun to ply it. And I can make sure that as I'm plying it the orange is next to the orange so I get a nice relatively crisp transition from the pinks and the purples into the orange because you can do your loops as long or as short as you want so you really can control how your colours are playing together. That's another length of single spun. I'll there. stop there to show you again how I'm winding onto the shaft. I'm just going to butterfly down, take the, the hitch off, unhook it from underneath that leg and again rotate my spindle so that single forms the cone of the cop at the base of the shaft, just at the top of that, that baby turtle that's forming. And then when I'm happy with how much I've got left, so that I've got enough to get up to the top of my shaft, but not much further, I'll go underneath one of the legs, half hitch it on at the top, and I'm ready to go again. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. Uh, if you did and you enjoyed spending time in my company, feel free to like and subscribe down below and, and do all the stuff that the YouTubers tell you. I aim to put a video out every weekend, it's normally on a Saturday. Once a month it's a roundup of all the things I've been working on that particular month. And in between times this video is a bit more like this one where I'm showing you how I personally do a particular technique or project or a um, particular type of craft. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, I'd love to see you in the next video. In the meantime, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.